So when our time is through, I want to know we did what we came to do for the future ones. So in our darkest days, may we all be strong and give our lives some life. May go.
Greetings from Meadville Lombard Theological School on this very joyous occasion of the ordination of our alum, Ali Kujichagulia Bell. Listening, being open, at times being shaken to one's core, all the while remaining committed to a call, Ali, that is bigger than you could ever imagine, a call that urges you with laser precision on the pathway to justice, liberation, love, and world peace. A call that beckons you toward sacrifice, more than worldly gain, and yet it is sufficient and humbling each and every day. We have watched you journey towards this day. We remember your first year at Meadville Lombard. We celebrated your graduation just a few days ago, and now we with pride witness your ordination. We have full confidence that you will endeavor to live out Maya Angelou's vision when she said, try to be a rainbow in somebody else's cloud. Ali, may you bring that kind of magnificence to those to whom you minister. May it ever be so. Ashe. Hello, I'm the Reverend Michael Crumpler, the LGBTQ and Multicultural Programs Director at the Unitarian Universalist Association. I am honored to have been invited to offer a greeting on behalf of the Reverend Susan Frederick Gray and the UUA's LGBTQ and Multicultural Ministries Office. First, let me say congratulations, Ali for enduring the rigor of service and examination to get you to this moment in your life, during what is turning out to be a very critical moment in history. I would also like to offer congratulations to Unitarian Universalism, as you are truly a gift to our faith and exactly the minister we need amid this great racial reckoning and our social movement toward gender diversity and inclusion. For it's not enough to welcome, include, and affirm people of color and non-binary persons, but in order to truly transform our faith and the world, we must be led by those whom we wish to embrace, uplift, and celebrate. You are that person. You are the one we have been waiting for. I love you and I'm so excited about what Unitarian Universalism will become through your ministry. Congratulations. Good afternoon. My name is Sana Saeed. My pronouns are she, her. As Congregational Life Staff for the Central East Region of the Unitarian Universalist Association, I bring greetings on this joyful day to ordain Ali. Ali and I's relationship deepened in a study group where we study for our Ministerial Fellowship Committee interviews. We are truly blessed to have Ali join the ranks of Unitarian Universalist Ministry. There is a prayer by Ali on the worship web titled, Revel in the Mystery, and it says, 
May we find the courage to revel in the experience of the mystery. May we approach the unknown with excitement, even if we can only muster a tiny bit. May we celebrate the curiosity that leads to searching. May we celebrate ourselves along the way and love us unapologetically. Today, I greet you and invite you to revel in Ali's ministerial presence, approach this ordination, a sacred milestone with excitement, celebrate the curiosity if this is your first ordination service, and most of all, unapologetically love and support Ali as they become a reverend today and on their journey after today. May it be so. Amen. Ashe. Welcome. Good day. A good day to you all, friends. It is indeed a good day. My name is Reverend Chris Long, and I use the pronouns he, him, his. We are here to connect and rise, to connect in honor of our beloved Ali Kujichagulia, Celeste Bell Dagado's ordination. Can I get an amen even here and across the virtual yeah. landscape? Y'all, our beloved is being ordained today. They are being ordained by three august bodies, the Church of the Larger Fellowship, the First Unitarian Church of Wilmington, and of course, the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Montclair. To the members and friends of all of these bodies, we thank, honor, and welcome you here, either in person and across the virtual landscape. To the co-senior ministers of this congregation, Reverends Anya and Scott Samler Michael, and the members and friends of this congregation, thank you for opening up this historic congregation for today's ordination. Also to the tech team, the video editors, and the sextons here at the congregation who have also worked hard to pull today's ordination into being. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. To Ali's family of origin and chosen family who are doing double duty with many graduations, and some are in fact traveling back to the, their home from the Air Force Academy. We sincerely thank you and welcome you to today's celebration. To Ali, as we continue to connect and rise, I share this blessing from our treasured recent ancestor, the Toni Morrison from her book, Beloved. Ali, as we continue to, you continue to cross the threshold of becoming an ordained Unitarian Universalist minister, this quote crafted by Ms. Morrison shared through the character of Baby Suggs. In this here place, we flesh, flesh that weeps and laughs, flesh that dances on bare feet in grass, love it. Love it hard. Yonder, they do not love your flesh. They despise it. They do not love your eyes. They just as soon pluck them out. No more do they love the skin on your back. Yonder, they flay it. And oh, my people, they do not love your hands. Those are only used to tie, bind, chop off, and leave empty. Love your hands. Love them. Raise them up and kiss them. Touch others with them. Pat them together. Stroke them on your face, because they don't love that either. You got to love it. You got to love you. And no, they ain't in love with your mouth. Yonder out there, they will see it broken and break it again. What you say out of it, they will not heed. What you scream from it will not be heard. What you put into your mouth, nourish your body, they will snatch it away and give you leavings instead. No, they do not love your mouth. 
You gotta love it. This flesh I'm talking about here, flesh that needs to be loved, feet that need to rest and to dance, backs that need support, shoulders that need arms, strong arms. I'm telling you, and oh, my people, welcome, welcome, one and all, welcome. When an artist blows glass to make a stunning piece, they do so with great care. Small piles of sand, soda ash, and limestone are gathered together and heated at extremely high temperatures. But it is during this time in the furnace that the transformation happens. What was once piles of stone and debris become clear and flexible, able to be shaped and molded into the perfect design. So after much work, patience, and risk, the glass eventually cools, becoming what it was always designed to become, a beautiful, just as sand, soda ash, and limestone are transformed by fire into beautiful glass with purpose, so are we when we realize what we are called to be. The formation of our calling is like an intense flame. It molds us, bends us, and shapes us. When we come out of that fire, we come out transformed, fit, and ready for our call, a vessel perfectly designed. We light this chalice to remind us of our greater purpose. May this flame of our faith burn bright with the courage of our call. And may this fire form us, mold us, and burn even brighter within us. Buenos dias. Good morning. I'm so grateful to have been invited to this sacred gathering. Gracias. Beloveds, let us open our hearts in the spirit of prayer and let us breathe together. Let us be aware of how land may be an important part of our identity and an integral element in our spiritual practices. How and where are we grounding ourselves right now? What is supporting our bodies and souls in this very moment, in this very breath? How are we connected to the land that is underneath us, around us, and how are we connected to its people? How are we connected to the land that we might never return to? Today, in this moment, with this breath, we give thanks to Creator for the land we are blessed to be supported by, giving thanks for all our relatives for life. Today, in this breath, we are aware of the soil beneath us, and we are grateful for it. We thank the indigenous peoples on whose lands we are on, and we name them and honor them. Please take a moment to invoke the name of the people whose sacred land is supporting you. I happen to be in Hayward, California, and I am being supported by Ohlone land and I raise prayers of gratitude for the ancestors. For thousands of years, this land was inhabited by the Ohlone people who cared for this land in a way that honored all that was here. We hope that wherever we are 
we can amplify that truth and learn what it means to be stewards of this beautiful and sacred land and to be inspired to form meaningful relationships with local indigenous peoples working to protect the sacred land, to repair injustices, and to move forward together in honorable ways. As the names come in of the indigenous people on whose land you are on, we lift up prayers of gratitude and together we breathe that prayer. Together we pray to Pachamama, Mother Earth. In grateful silence, we breathe with each other and Pachamama. This is a Mapuche prayer. I pray as I hear the pigeon coo and the wind whistling through the leaves. I breathe in and my heart expands. I breathe out my gratitude for the rivers and the creeks, the lakes and the oceans. I breathe in the sacred mystery, connecting me to the core of Pachamama, to their fire. I breathe out my fears. I breathe in a quiet joy and strength and breathe out my prayer that I may live in a good way, honoring the earth wherever I am. From this place of gratitude, let us lift up the words of poet Joy Harjo. Remember the earth whose skin you are, red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth, we are earth. Remember the plants, the trees, animal life, who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk to them, listen to them. They are alive poems. Remember the wind, remember their voice. The wind knows the origin of this universe. Remember you are all people and all people are you. Remember you are this universe and this universe is you. Remember all is in motion, is growing, is you. Remember. Ashe, 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 y que así sea. Amen. African wisdom teaches that I am because we are. I speak today nested on the sacred soil of Oklahoma, a land that has welcomed black and brown bodies for generations. It's on this land, Ali, as you will recall, where you and I have explored the political and spiritual lives of our peoples, where we gained insight into the power of love and the joy of restoration as it moved among and between the people. We saw the, our ancestors at work. So it's important to note that there is wisdom that exists in the crossroads, in the intersections of where you have been and where you are going. Know that as you cross these intersections, as you breathe into each of those spaces, that your ancestors, the we, are awaiting you there. Remember too that each breath is an invitation for our ancestors to accompany you, an opportunity to connect, to soar, to be the powerful you that is part of the we. May that breath bring you awareness. May awareness bring you to solace. And may solace remind you that always, always, even in the quiet times, that you are always part of the we. Blessings. A warm welcome to the ancestors. A core theme of today is Sankofa, going back and retrieving. In my Japanese Shinto traditions, one concept is Musubi, the power of creation, as well as the ties that bind us to each other and to the whole cosmos. These ties also connect us to our ancestors and to our descendants. Our ancestors created us and we create the future. 
Let us thank our ancestors for joining with us today and give them blessings as we also ask them to bless us and to bless Ali as we hold this space and time together in this liminal moment as we create the future together. So may it be. Greetings, beloveds. I am Matthew P. Taylor, an intern minister at the UU Congregation of Rockville, lead lay pastor of Covenant UU, and vice president of DRUM. As part of my tradition of witchcraft, we invite our well and benevolent ancestors into our spaces to witness and bless our rights. I am Matthew, the child of Katie, who is the child of Jesse May, who is the child of Ellen, who is the child of Lucy. And we call forth Ali's line of living and deceased to honor and bear witness to Ali's ordination. We call Ali's older brother, Yusuf Ali Bell. We call John Bell, Ali's living father. And Thomas Smith, Ali's grandfather. We invite you as you are able to call into this space, your well and benevolent ancestors to witness this momentous occasion by typing their names into the chat. We wish many blessings to Ali and gratitude to our ancestors. Blessed be. It is an honor to be part of your ordination service today. Ali, you are part of a tradition of strong black leaders who forged their own way. Prophetic, courageous, and strong black Unitarian and Universalist leaders who did not let anything get in the way of their ministries. I will be highlighting just a few of these leaders. Frances Ellen Watkins Harper, the first black woman to be paid and make a living from her writing. Frances was part of the Unitarian Church in Philadelphia while maintaining her membership in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, where she taught Sunday school. She wrote three novels specifically for Black people. She traveled far and wide preaching against slavery. She even boycotted goods made by slave labor, including sugar and cotton. Then there's F Fanny Barrier Williams who was a black woman who delivered a speech during the first ever World Parliament of Religions in Chicago in 1893 titled Religious Duty to the Negro. 
She said, what can religion further do to advance the condition of the colored people? More religion, less church, she said, less declamation and more common sense and love for truth. Fanny delivered this speech and was emphatic throughout her ministry that churches needed to do a better job of practicing what they were preaching, especially when it came to lifting up what was happening to Black people and making life better for Black people and more equitable. A fierce and courageous Black woman, Fanny had been part of the Unitarian Church of All Souls in Chicago. Reverend Lewis McGee, a black man who started as a minister in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, realized he was a humanist and became ordained as a Unitarian minister. The first black minister of the mostly white Chico Unitarian Fellowship in 1961. He was the first black man called to a mostly white church. And then our beloved Reverend Egbert Ethel Red Brown, while we don't have patron saints as you use, if I was going to suggest one to you, Ali, it would be Ethelred, a Jamaican man who was determined to lead a Unitarian congregation, and he persevered in spite of no support from the Unitarian leaders at the time. However, he did not let anything stop him from being a Unitarian minister and leading a black church in Harlem. The act of ordination is a sacred and holy ceremony that brings together your call, Ali, and the communities that have held and nurtured your ministry. This, the act of ordination, is a formal and official ritual that we are a part of today. And as a Black Unitarian Universalist, you follow along the path blazed by unsung heroes of our faith both ordained and lay leaders who did not wait for permission to live their faith out loud and proud. One day, in the not-too-distant future, the time for all ages will be your story, Ali, and the story of your impact and prophetic voice in Unitarian Universalism. What your story names will be up to you. I, for one, cannot wait to find out what happens next. Congratulations to you, Ali, and to all of us on this sacred and beautiful culmination of your journey toward ordained leadership. Amen, blessed be, and ashe. Hello, my name is Althea Smith, and I've had the great pleasure of being a learning fellow with Ali at the Church of the Larger Fellowship. Today I'm here to speak with you about Blue. Black Lives of Unitarian Universalists. Although Blue Organizing Committee came together in July of 2015, it owes its roots to the Black Affairs Council and the Black Unitarian Universalist Caucus from the late 1960s. Blue is an, both an organization and a faith community whose efforts are designed to lift up issues of BIPOC UUs and to help keep focus within the domination and in the world on liberation efforts. Being a BIPOC and a Unitarian Universalist is not easy, I know. Blue has a tradition of running interference for us, lending a hand when we need it, and speaking in a collective voice to issues when we cannot find the words. As you think about giving, Please think about giving to Blue. It is so important that we continue this vital ministry. The information on how to do this will be in the chat. I'm Bran Lennox, and it has been my privilege to be in the same seminary cohort with my friend and colleague, Ali. I'm also a member of TRUST, an organization which provides support and advocacy for transgender Unitarian Universalist religious professionals. Offerings collected for trust will aid people like us in our complex journeys to share our passion and capability for leadership with communities which aren't always ready to embrace our whole selves. We all have a unique opportunity today to really demonstrate what we believe in with each offering shared. Please give generously to the best of your ability. 
We receive this offering with gratitude and with the vision of our, in our hearts of tomorrow's Unitarian Universalism, guided onwards by beloved and thriving transgender religious professionals. Thank you for sharing in this dream. I am Jenny McCready, and I am blessed to be a colleague of Ali's and to be here today to celebrate Zura ordination. Since 1988, the Unitarian Universalist Association has maintained a living tradition fund. It provides need-based scholarships for UU seminarians, aid to new ministers to reduce the burden of student debt, and emergency assistance grants to seminarians, ministers, and other UU religious professionals. It has become a tradition that people generously contribute to the Living Tradition Fund at ordinations of UU ministers. This is your chance to contribute to the future of Unitarian Universalist ministry and another step towards making the fellowship process accessible to all, regardless of financial means. For information on contributing to the Living Tradition Fund, please see the chat below this screen and please be generous as you give. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Don't you know that? This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this strength that I have, this strength that I have. This strength that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This strength that I have. Oh, yeah. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This strength that I have. Oh, yeah. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. All oh, this love, this love that I had. This love that I had. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This love that I had. Oh, yeah. The, the world didn't give it to me. Don't you know that? This love that I had. Yeah. The world didn't give it to me. Singing, the, the world, world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this pride that I have, this pride that I have. This pride that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This pride that I have. I said the world didn't give it to me. Don't you know that? This pride that I have, yeah. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. All this peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give me my peace. This peace that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. Won't you sing about peace? This peace that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. I said, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. All this joy that I have, this joy that I have. Resistance Revival Chorus believes in the words written by the poet Toy Derricott when she wrote, Joy is an act of resistance. We believe in the words of Mr. Harry Belafonte, who said, when the movement is strong, the music is strong. 
We sing to revive the hearts of those who fight for social justice. And we sing together for freedom. Many of my contemporaries, role models, but especially ancestors, have a name that brings the tongue to worship. Names that feel like ritual in your mouth. I don't want a name said without pause, muttered without intention. I am through with names that leave me unmoved. Names that leave the speaker's mouth unscathed. I want a name like fire, like rebellion, like my hand gripping Massa's whip. I want a name from before the ships, a name Donald Trump might choke on. I want a name that catches you in the throat if you say it wrong. And if you are afraid to say it wrong, then I guess you should be. I want a name only the brave can say, a name that only fits right in the mouth of those who love me right. Because only the brave can love me right. I say tu shango is the name you take when you are tired of burying your jewels under thick layers of suit and self-doubt. I say tu the light, shango, the pickaxe, so that people must mine your soul just to get your attention. If you have to ask why I changed my name, it's already too far beyond your comprehension. Call me Callus, but a name like Shango, I cannot afford to tread lightly. You go hard or you go home. And I am centuries and ships away from any semblance of a homeland. I am a thief's poor bookkeeping skills away from any source of ancestry. I am blindly collecting the shattered pieces of a continent much larger than my comprehension. I hate explaining my name to people, their eyes peering over my journal, looking for history they can rewrite. Ask me what my name means. What does your name mean? Not every word needs an English equivalent in order to have significance. I am done folding up to fit your stereotype. Your black friend, your headline, your African queen meme, your hurt feelings, your desire to learn the rhetoric of, of solidarity without the practice. I do not have time to carry your allyship. I am trying to build a continent a country, a home. My name is the only thing I have that is unassimilated, and I am not even sure I can call it mine. The body is a safeless place if you do not know its name. Asetu is what it sounds like when you are trying to bend a syllable into a home with shaky shutters, and wind whistling through your empty. I feel empty. There is no safety in a name. No home in a body. A name is honestly just a name. A name is honestly just a ritual. And still, it sounds like reverence. I won't just survive Oh, you will see me thrive And write my story I'm beyond the arc of time I won't just come 
What would Unitarian Universalism, an intrinsically difficult name, mean to us if we allowed it to flow through all of its syllables? If approaching this tradition truly required one to taste liquid fire contained in a chalice? What if we were to reclaim our birth from a love that cleanses, that catalyzes, that changes? What if Unitarian Universalism was a difficult name. We teach our young ones the sounds of our name and its meaning. We make use with our fingers and memorize the syllables and even teach them how very much was given by so many for this kind of religious freedom, for a love that wraps itself around each and all and for a clarity of thought and mind that lends itself to justice. We teach them to be vulnerable, to live into their own goodness, and we invite them week after week to strengthen and deepen their faith. We call them into discipleship, into living morning by morning and day by day how Unitarian Universalism calls them into being. And there is trust in that invitation. Trust in our years of being shaped by this faith. Trust in the paths some of us took along the way to find ourselves here. Trust that we know that the we in Unitarian Universalism, of course, includes our children, our youth, and our young adults. Trust that we, whose labor keeps this movement alive, know to our core how very much is at stake in the right to name and understand God on our own terms through the use of our very human faculties that we inherit from Unitarian Universalism and an all-embracing love that will not let us go, gifted to us from our universalist roots. A clarifying wisdom and an endlessly compassionate love. Such are the treasures we have been offered. I am mindful that our beloveds often enter a period of confusion when they transition out of our dedicated spaces for youth and young adults into the main community, and they find that discipleship is not asked of all of us in UU spaces. You can call it whatever you like, meaning-making, living our values, moving through the world as bearers of love and justice. I particularly like that last one that comes from the Reverend Brian Jessup. No matter the words, at its core is an ongoing invitation to become more than we would otherwise be outside of this faith that we love and to live our lives in service to that greater good that we teach about. It is that more that matters. This is not to say that we cannot be shaped by goodness outside of this faith. It is not that there aren't teachings from the world's moral witness and religious philosophies that can guide us to a greater truth. 
It is that we have chosen to connect here, chosen to rise together in community toward a future possibility that just might make us more whole. It is the absolute certainty that being born into Unitarian Universalism or discovering it along the way is not the pinnacle of spiritual achievement. It is instead a covenant in community to live our way to newfound truths. The thing about discipleship is that it cannot be packed into tasty, bite-sized pieces free from the risk of change. Ours claims to be a living tradition, one that builds in wisdom and in love as it goes. And I see this bursting forth from what Unitarian Universalism dreams we might yet become. It arises in collective activism, in the profound moral witness of our chaplains in the face of pandemic, in a board of trustees willing to take on an entire morass of bylaws, yes, I went there, in the name of justice. It develops in the seeds we plant in community gardens, in the theological language we create together out of our heart's deepest longings. It twists around our poets' fiery tongues. The soon-to-be Reverend Ali Kujichagulia Bell reminds me that a phoenix, time and again, flies ever forward in its living, yet soon bursts into flame, more glorious with each scorching transition, rising again from the ashes to continue onward. Our phoenix rises again and again in community, in the hopeful, fervent prayer that we too might rise in its glory. Yet it is not enough to trust that all of us will continue to rise each time from the ashes. Our story is continual, but it also comes with profound loss along the way. Who are we using as kindling to keep our chalices lit. No matter the habits of Ellis Island, we immigrants and children of immigrants will not allow the smoothing out or shortening of a tidy naming. It is not ours to first seek that which soothes and reassures, to slide in behind pews unnoticed as if some of us could ever go unnoticed in our places of worship and assimilate to an unthreatening status quo. I want Unitarian Universalism to be given a difficult name, an immigrant's name that resounds with the promise of home, a name shaped by disability and all its knowing of wholeness, a name that is as black, black, blackety black as a name can be, one that resonates with dignity that can never be stripped away. I want Unitarian Universalism to be given a difficult name, one whose gender radiantly exceeds all definition, one that teems with the fecundity of an earth made whole, one that carries everyday strategies for community care as we work for economic justice, one that approaches a range of peoples and skins and sizes and cultures and beings, not only with an all-embracing love, but with, as the Reverend Marjorie Bowens Wheatley reminded us, an awareness that it is resting on sacred ground. I want a Unitarian Universalism that knows that the name Linda, Linda, means beautiful and does not waste its energy in fear that the long-honored names will somehow no longer be given life. I want a Unitarian Universalism that arises in all of us that cannot rest when India suffers and Palestine bleeds and I want us to work for it. Discipleship is simply the choice to practice Unitarian Universalism every day 
to be open to how its teachings might change us and to risk expanding what we know. We are not pledging to follow one teacher or leader or even a particular rhetoric, but to the work of faithfulness itself. As our president, the Reverend Susan Frederick Gray insists, this is no time for a casual faith. And we support that risk-taking, justice-promoting, love-embracing faith through daily practice, living by the very principles that our congregations and communities hold in sacred covenant means resisting the habit of assuming Unitarian Universalism reached its pinnacle, the moment we truly committed ourselves to its teachings. The UUism each one of us gifted to ourselves on that day, however we understand and express our journeys of faith, cannot possibly be the best version of itself, because it was missing the wisdom and sacrality of every individual who found this faith after we did. It was missing the witness of all we did not yet know. For this difficult naming is larger than any one of us or any habit of mine. The Sufi mystic and teacher Hazrat Inayat Khan was a renowned musician who among many other things taught about the power of naming. In his writings, he insists that our names are the most important music, the most vital resonance of our lifetimes. In essence, your name is the sound that you hear more than any other in your life. Its vibrations call you into being. He cautioned against the use of nicknames because to shorten a name is to lessen the power that is calling forth that individual who carries the name in the world. I have not yet encountered any teachings from Inayat Khan on the decision to change one's name, but I imagine it to be something like a newly reborn phoenix taking flight, more glorious for the transformation and for the wisdom required to journey through fire to a name that calls us to our true selves. Many of us have found our living in this journey of names, of answering a call that builds in the quiet spaces between our bones, one that cares little for the logic of the job market or expectations of complacency. Ministry in all of its forms is one such naming, whether in the promises of one beloved who commits themselves today to a life of religious leadership or to the outstretched spirits of the many who commit themselves to the everyday, non-heroic, unsung labor of a faithful life well-lived. In the dance between those two, We widen the circle of concern. We build the world that we dream about and we resist the call of an unexamined or a casual faith. Let us be the first to explore new ideas that should long have been a part of our faith tradition. Let us never silence the inherent worth of the many for the habitual comfort of the few to be as clear as I can be, let there no longer be a Unitarian Universalism that refuses to be in dialogue with the now almost 50 year old teachings of critical race theory. Let us not make a fetish out of human reason by only turning our search for truth and meaning toward experiences we already know. Ali. Beloved, in you I see such promise for our living tradition, for our evolving faith. It lies in your calling to make room for each and all, to invest in us that we might connect with one another and rise and rise and rise again in the rhythms of the phoenix that call you into being. I see boundless depths of grace 
that we might continue the work of our faithful living, even when we falter, and we will, and still find ourselves made new. On this most sacred day, I offer you the one thing that is truly mine, my trust in your ministry, my faith in all that will be made possible in this difficultly named yet endlessly loved faith of ours. May the fire of your tongue and this name on your lips always sound like reverence. And may your ministry and those with whom you are blessed to ministry be forever blessed. Amen. Ashe. And blessed be. Friends, I invite you to breathe with me. I invite you to connect with me to the spirit of the divine or the ultimate as you know it. I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, source of being on this most sacred of occasions in our free faith, we ask for blessings on the ministry of our beloved Ali Kuji Chagulia Bell as he takes up the mantle of ordained ministry. Spirit of connection, we ask for blessings also on Ali's community, this magnificently abundant community of family, friends, ancestors, teachers, mentors, colleagues, and congregants, beloved all, gathered in body and pixel and spirit, transcending borders of time and space, weaving the interconnected web from far-flung corners of our globe and from beyond the veil of this mortal life. Among us today, present only in spirit are more than 100 incarcerated members of the Church of the Larger Fellowship who voted, who cast votes by mail to affirm Ali's ordination. The inhumanity of the prison industrial complex denies their participation in this celebration. As people of universalist faith, let us fight let us work and let us pray for the day when they and all members of the human family may take part in the full promise of our first principle. Until that day, let us bind them in spirit to our hearts here and among us. Spirit, of gratitude. On this momentous day, we circle round the deep well of Ali's ministry from which our hearts and minds, souls and spirits have taken such nourishment. We give praise and thanks for the strength, fire, boldness, tenacity, truth telling and tenderness by which Ali lives and breathes, preaches, prays, and pastors. Spirit of justice, open our hearts to heed the invitation embodied in Ali's ministry, an invitation to reckon with our collective past, the trauma and sins the resilience and redemption, the pain and the great promise. An invitation also to rise up like flames from the ashes of that past. 
and with those flames to forge our world anew through lives of radical authenticity, unequivocal belonging, unrelenting justice, and courageous love. For this is the ministry of our beloved Ali. Spirit of mercy, we know that ministry is a privilege, but that privilege is a demanding one, an exhausting one, and too often a heartbreaking one, especially for those who embody intersecting marginalized identities. We ask, gracious God, that you bless Ali with the gifts Z will need to replenish that well of their ministry, rest and joy, beauty, affection, comfort, peace, play, laughter, tears, and the abiding love of faithful companions. Spirit of love, most gracious God, help us to remember that your blessings are bestowed not apart from us, but through us in the relationships and the covenants that we make with one another, in our words and actions of compassion, justice, encouragement, and care. Your blessings are our work. May they move freely through us that we may support and sustain Ali in the ministry our world so achingly needs right now. May it be so. May we make it so. Amen. In the living tradition of Unitarian Universalism, the authority to ordain a minister rests solely with the congregation. It is a meaningful and joyous occasion when a congregation joins together, as we have, to recognize one who has answered the call to ministry as their life's work. This is a sacred time as we ordain one whose ministry was shaped by being among us. Ali received their call to ministry in our congregation as a member and became one of our sponsored seminarians. Today, in the tradition of our free church, we who are gathered here have the honor and duty of adding another minister to the lineage of clergy that reaches far back in time and far forward into the future. The act of ordination bestows the authority of religious leadership, the title of reverend, and the privilege to wear a stall and bear the responsibilities of that mantle. Among us, and wherever you may be called to serve, may you preach the truth in love, minister to joys and sorrows alike, work for justice and liberation, nurture spiritual growth, and embody in your life the principles of our faith. In our eyes and in our hearts, you are a minister. Today, we confirm your calling. Are you prepared to embark formally and fully upon the path of ministry? I am. As the church where Ali recognized their call, to serve in the ministry of our tradition. By vote of the board, our congregation has voted to ordain Ali Kuchi Chagulia Celeste Bell. As the Learning Fellowship congregation that helped Ali to build the foundations of their ministry and provided expansiveness for their wings to soar, by affirmation of the board and vote of the congregation, including for the first time the full and free vote of our incarcerated Unitarian Universalist members, our congregation has chosen to ordain Ali Kujichagulia Celeste Bell. As the teaching congregation that gave its heart, its time, and its trust to help Ali hone their ministerial presence 
talents, and skills. By vote of the board, our congregation has chosen to ordain Ali Kujichagulia Celeste Bell. We, we invite, invite you, you now, now to speak, speak the words of ordination displayed on your screen. We, the members of the First Unitarian Church of Wilmington, the Church of the Larger Fellowship, Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Montclair, do, do hereby ordain you, you Ali Kujitragulia Celeste Bell, Bell into, into the Unitarian Universalist Ministry. We affirm your call to serve in the tradition of our shared faith. May, May you comfort the suffering, suffering and, and do your, your part in healing a broken world. May you interpret life passed through the fire of thought. Wherever you may be called, we charge you to speak, speak the truth in freedom and love, to minister with compassion to joy and sorrows, and to work for justice each day. First Unitarian Church is very proud of you, Ali. We have seen you grow into ministry. We have this particular stole for you to wear that will remind you of where you came from. The colors are blue, green, and purple with a bright yellow chalice. The uh, the stole was designed by Nancy Pinson, and it was she picked out the fabric, and then Mimi Moser was the seamstress who made it. On the back of the stole, so that you will remember this day, are written the words, honoring the ordination of Ali Kuchi Chagulia, I'll get it right, Bell. May 22, 2021, from your friends at First Unitarian Church of Wilmington. Wear this with our blessing for a long and successful ministry. Thank you, First Unitarian. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. The Church of the Larger Fellowship is also absolutely thrilled, Ali, to welcome you to ministry and to present you with a stole. This stole represents the trust of our congregation, the trust that all of our members, free and incarcerated, have placed in you. May you feel that trust when you wear it upon your shoulders. Thank you, CLF. Thank you to the incarcerated members who took the time to vote for me. I know that it was difficult for you to vote. Thank you to all of our members. Thank you. Ali, on behalf of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Montclair and made by our crazy quilters, we share this stole made by donated scarves and ties of members of this congregation, embroidered with a chalice in the colors that support and advocate for trans lives and the words that remind us always that black lives matter. We thank you, Ali, for your ministry. Thank you to this congregation. Thank you to the members. It's very beautiful. Cherish it. Thank you very much. Hello, I am Everett Dunham, son of Ali, who is the child of John, a minister, the son of Thomas, who is an itinerant preacher. This is my sister, Carrie. 
child of Ali, who is the child of Camille, who is the, who is the daughter of Aleme, who is the daughter of Olivia, who is the daughter of Belinda, who is the daughter of Melinda. Thank you for being here to bless our parent on this day. We present to you this doll on behalf of our family. It was made by Stephanie Lewis Robertson, a, fashion, a fabric designer and a teacher. The colors in this doll represent water and air. A couple of the fabrics were from her personal stash of her favorite dyed pieces that were waiting for the right opportunity to become something, to become something meaningful. The doll is reversible and covered on both sides with symbols important to Ali. Sankofa birds and hearts are present. Sankofa is a term from Ghana, which means to go and back and retrieve what that was, was lost. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, and Ali, thank you for including the three of us who knew you at the beginning of your ministry call. We congratulate you and are confident that you will make a wonderful minister. Laying on of hands is an ancient tradition. When Moses laid his hand on Joshua, it was to ordain a new leader. Throughout the centuries, the laying on of hands has been a symbol for passing on wisdom, authority, blessing, healing, and bequeathing the power of the Holy Spirit. When we Unitarian Universalists use it in the ordination of our ministers, it becomes a symbol of the power of the spirit of life and love rooted in the community gathered to recognize a new minister. A new minister leader has come among us. Trans we transfer energy from hand to hand to the ordinee, ordainee, excuse me, that is part prayer, part blessing, part commissioning. The laying on of hands symbolizes the conveyance of the office of minister by the only group able to do so, the members of a Unitarian Universalist congregation. Please join me now in blessing and prayer. Spirit of life and love, God of many names, we gather today to bless our beloved Ali as he embarks upon this journey of ministry. Ali's ministry is a fierce one, a ministry of love, rising from the tension and the conflict, the oppression and the pain, the hurt and disappointment that have plagued our faith and our society for far too long. It's a ministry of rebuilding connections and forging new relationships to guide us as we move forward. And that journey begins today with all of us assembled right here, right now at this ordination. Let us pledge to support this new ministry, to feed and nourish Ali's spirit when their reserves are low, to love and encourage Ali when he feels discouraged and alone, to stand beside Ali as he battles injustice and oppression. We bless this ministry and this minister today, not only for this moment, but in all the days to come. In the name of all that is just, sacred, and holy, let us say together, amen. Ashe, and blessed be. There was a time when we would all have been together in the sanctuary for this ritual. Part of me laments the fact that we cannot literally join hands and move the spirit from one to another to our beloved Ali. But not all of us, of course, would have been here. 
There are many people at this virtual event who could not have made the trip for various reasons. So I celebrate the opportunity for us all to participate from all the various places we are. Would you hold up your hands now to the sides of your screen so that you are touching the person on either side and let that energy of blessing and affirmation flow. Now we ask the colleagues in the sanctuary to join us in the laying on of hands. Hands are often thought of and spoken about metaphorically as the embodiment of where work happens. To bless the hands of a minister, then, is to bless their work as it is expressed and lived out in the world. Ali, please hold out your hands. Ali, in this place that is both many places and many times, but also here and now, in this sacred moment, may God bless the work of your hands. Informed by wisdom, intuition, consultation, and reflection, may your hands bring comfort. May they hold. May they let go. May they bring sustenance. May they push. May they extend and welcome, send out with anointing. May they fold in prayer and rest. God bless Ali's hands that they may continue to be a blessing to others. Amen. Ali, it is an honor and a privilege to welcome you as a colleague and to offer blessing on your ministry, your ministry in this faith and in this world. I welcome you into a community of colleagues that is more ready to receive the gift of your presence than ministers of color have known before. This faith and this world are both searching for wholeness again, and progress has been made. At least in Unitarian Universalism, there are more of us. You will be welcomed, but the welcome will not be perfect. The work of building beloved community is only just begun. And so I welcome you into a layered accountability that you will need to maintain. Du Bois was right about the double consciousness. Ease for you in this faith will probably not come easily. In the communities of colleagues where you can find it, treasure it, especially in the community of colleagues of color. The Sankofa bird moves forward but looks to the past, to ancestors for wisdom stories and support I and we will be there for you. But even as you begin, which you already have, you will be asked to mentor and guide those who follow. You must look both back and forward for wisdom and for hope. One of the blessings is that you already know all of this and still you extend a hand and a heart and a mind and a spirit, you extend yourself in faith that you will be welcomed. Know that there are many hands ready to support you and spirits ready to join your spirit in healing and in blessing the world. Bless you. Ali, what a blessed day. It is indeed an honor to celebrate with you this marker of ministry, a ministry which you have been engaged in 
for many years in many names in many places. Your ability to connect through your honesty, through your directness, through your authentic life will serve you and our movement well. And that connection that you have to your deepest place, to your Holy Spirit, will guide you in times when connection is hard. We're an imperfect bunch that you're joining. I think you know that. And as we long to rise, there will be people whose spirits rise with you, who celebrate with you, who enable you to soar. And there will be other times when you will feel pulled down as if you are swimming and a drowning person is clinging to you. Ali, you know when you need to take care of yourself. You have been a phoenix. You have risen from ashes. You have recreated life and you know how to do that. And that will serve you well with colleagues. I speak as a white elder. <laughs> we are, as Bill said, fumbling, stumbling, doing our best and failing, making mistakes, hurting each other. It's my commitment to you always to listen, always to believe you, always to trust in your vision and your ministry and your holiness in body and spirit. You are a blessing. You've already been a blessing to this faith. You will be a blessing to the colleagues. And please, please make it a priority, as Bill mentioned, to receive the blessings of those who can return the blessing to you. Blessed be on this precious, precious day. And amen. Reverend Ali Kujitagalia Bell, we have ordained you. We have laid our hands upon you in blessing and our hands have been blessed by so many, so many out there and here as well. It is my distinct honor and privilege to extend to you the right hand of fellowship, to welcome you into the stream of ancestors who have made up the Unitarian Universalist ministry for so long. You are now one of us and you will always be. Welcome.
Reverend Ali Kuji Chagulia Bell, this is your charge. Today you received a new name, Reverend. It's the one that we have been wanting to give you for a long time, but it's not a name that we can give. It comes in the words of the Reverend Dr. Pamela Lightsey by way of sacrifice. It is not an addition or even an alteration to your full blessing of a name. It is a constant reminder of your call. Mm -hmm. A reminder of the call that has beckoned you to this altar, that beckons you to open your heart and your arms to lead, that beckons you when the hell of this world steals your kindred and threatens your soul to fall to your knees, mm. that beckons you to sacrifice for their and our salvation. Yes. So in this charge, I will charge you to be Reverend Ali Kuji Chagulia Bell as best as I know how. And I don't know words that are any better than we have heard already today to describe what this is, this being a reverend. But I can add that it is both a weight and a set of wings. And I can tell you that it is something that I do imperfectly, that you will do imperfectly that everyone who bears the title does imperfectly. Mm -hmm. And I can add that the reality of that imperfection is both a weight and wings. Mm -hmm. It is strange and concerning, isn't it? Yes. When all of this is done for us, done for you, when all of these people show up, sing out, preach and testify, teach, tech and magnify to ordain you, it is an oddity, right, to be at the center of all this precarious pomp and beauty. But here, here is the corrective, and it is a corrective that the title reverend gives. This ordination is not about you. Yes, yes. It is about the holy that manifests in your being, in your body, in your hands, in your pain, and in your joy, in your triumph, and in your struggle. It is about the holy that resists, that rises when you rise, that rises when you cannot and takes you somehow with it. It is about the holy that your life will mean for everyone that feels the incredible sacrifice of your ministry. It is about the holy that you clear the way for when you get out of the way. That spills into communities held by a powerful ministry that lives between colleagues that trust one another enough to walk through the valley of the shadow. It is about the holy for whom, for what, and for why we are called to be disciples. Like Francis Ellen Watkins Harper was called, like Fanny Barrier Williams was called, like Egbert Ethelred Brown was called, the title reverend is a sacrifice that you have taken on. Just feel the weight of those four stoles, the weight that you have taken on so that all of this may come to pass, so that more might share in this blessing, so that none will need to shelter in the doorways of our sanctified halls, but so they may instead come in and know that the Holy Spark is right there, right there in them as well, modeled in the witness of your reverent leadership. This Ali Kujichagulia Bell, this weight and these wings is what I charge you with, Reverend.
It is customary in an ordination or installation ceremony to charge the congregation performing the ceremony. Today, there are three such congregations, and the charge is complicated by the fact that Ali's formal relationship with each of those congregations is different, and in some cases, rapidly coming to an end. Nevertheless, there are some things I want us all to do, four things to be precise. First, let Ali go and let Ali grow. Second, don't let Ali go. Yes, I'm contradicting myself and we will get there. Third, let yourselves continue to be transformed by Ali's liberatory ministry. And finally, stay connected to one another. First, let Ali go and let Ali grow. Is necessary, whatever our relationship with Ali has been, that we allow them to leave us well and to blossom into a ministry separate from the role or roles that they have had with us. Each one of our congregations needs to understand that Ali will continue to grow after they leave. Remember what Ali was like when we met them and recognize that the growth that we have seen will not stop just because they're not among us. The next time you encounter Ali, they will be different. They will have grown. That is good. Second, don't let Ali go. Well, do let them go. But stay connected to them in ways that are meaningful, appropriate, and professional. Follow the best practices around not being in contact for a while and still and still proudly claim their ministry as one you helped incubate and start. Invite them back from time to time and revel, revel in the ways that they have developed and grown as a minister. You are all Ali's people and they are yours. And it is okay to treasure that knowledge in your hearts. While your relationship might have to be at a distance, it is still real. I think we're used to that by now, right? Mm. Third, let yourselves continue to be transformed by Ali's liberatory ministry. Whatever it is that Ali does tomorrow or next year, they have given all of us a gift. They have presented us a vision of liberatory ministry, of accountable anti-racism work, of self-determination, yes, Kuchi Chagulia, of the responsible and necessary use of power, and of the transformative power of love. Do not forget what Ali has taught us. Do not stop striving for the goals that they set before us just because they are not in our congregations anymore. Keep on moving forward as Ali would have us do. Finally, stay connected to one another. Now, y'all might not realize this, but the First Unitarian Church of Wilmington, the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Montclair, and the Church of the Larger Fellowship, we have become connected to one another through the bond of Ali's ministry. We share a love for Ali that will not go away once they leave us. And so we need to stay connected. We should work on things together, making justice together, hosting joint events when events are a thing again, <laughs> sharing technology and tips and best practices and justice ideas, perhaps pulpit exchanges from time to time. Perhaps the folks in Wilmington and Montclair could partner with CLF in our Worthy Now prison ministry as free world pen pals to our incarcerated members or by hosting conversations about prison abolition that we would gladly participate in. You are invited to do that. Whatever the connection looks, sounds, and feels like, it is good that we are connected to one another. It is good that we will stay 
connected to one another. It is good to be changed by our connections, our connections made possible by Ali's ministry. It is good to continue to be changed by having shared our experience of Ali's ministry. May we deepen all of the connections that we celebrate here today. Blessed be. Hello, everyone. I am the Reverend Michael O'Neill Slack, Community Minister for Worship and Spiritual Care for Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism and co-founder of the Transforming Hearts Collective. I send greetings from my home state of Georgia on land now called East Point, but once occupied by and stolen from the Kaweta tribe of the Creek Indians, who once made an abundant home throughout this state. It is a profound honor to join Ali and all those gathered on the occasion of Ali's ordination into Unitarian Universalist ministry. My work here, friends, is to charge us as a community. In this sacred space, we represent a community of many communities, some connected deeply to Unitarian Universalism and some not at all, some bound together by the work of professional ministry, and all, as I understand it, bound together by the workings of life, doing ministry, a word whose roots refer to service, attendance, or aid, in ways that require neither title nor position of particular influence. And so, today, I offer to us all this charge in four movements. The first movement is this, whoever you are, wherever you rest your head at night, whomever you're in relationship with and however you understand faith and connection, remember this, everything we do, say and believe matters in the public realm, even if and sometimes especially, especially if done, said and held behind closed doors. Everything we do, say, and believe will either usher in hopefulness and healing, or they will perpetuate or have the potential to perpetuate harm. May we all do the work needed to understand the differences between the two, to continually unlearn that which does harm and make way for more healing and more hope. The second movement is this. For those of us engaged in the work of justice, whether we're in a pulpit in the church, in front of a microphone or a megaphone on the streets, or having meaningful and sometimes really hard conversations with individuals and groups we're close to, please remember that the work does not and cannot begin and end on those platforms. We have a responsibility to humanity and to our faith. Number one, to really live outside of those spaces, what we express in those spaces. And relatedly, number two, to take the work of liberation and equity back home to all the places where our words may hold more weight than the words of others. Ali expressed this sentiment so powerfully to me when they said, and I quote, we cannot keep working on the flowers without also working at the roots, unquote. The third movement is this. For those of us living lives beyond borders and binaries, community can be as harrowing as it can be beautiful. We spend so much time growing into the people we feel called to be, and far too often that growth happens in isolation because communities can carry within them too many barriers to full personhood. There is work to be done here to ensure that the air you breathe is 
clean and clear enough for all of us to breathe a little easier and live into who we are meant to be in the world, even and especially when we may not be or believe like one another. May we all do this work so that more of us can show up whole, ask for guidance when we need it, and serve as models for, for folks who have every good reason to believe that being and becoming our best selves is not possible. And the fourth and final movement is that it was true before we arrived at this moment and it will remain true as we move to our next things that being in community requires that we are open to making sacrifices, getting uncomfortable, existing differently, communicating differently, and loving more fully and deeply, precisely because we are in a world that situates us as accomplices to systems of oppression. It matters that we, according to the mandate articulated by Mary Hooks from Southerners on New Ground, are being, and I quote, transformed in the service of the work, unquote. If you do nothing else, if we do nothing else when we leave this place, may we help one another believe in the capacity of ourselves and each other to grow, to change, and to shift toward ever-increasing frameworks of love and justice. May it be so for all of us today and every day. Ashe. You have truly blessed us here with your presence. We hear you when you preach your message, and we'll spread it worldwide as if we were the reverence. You have changed our hearts and minds in ways we will remember every day. You caused us to question our actions and guide us like a light to the right reaction. Take your experience here, and we will too. You are amazing, and your impact will continue. Now go out and do the wonderful things we all know you can do. We will never forget your voice in the UU. You gotta do when the Spirit says do. You gotta do when the Spirit says do. When the Spirit says do, you gotta do, oh Lord, you gotta do when the Spirit says do. Spirit says do, 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 Spirit says do.
thank you for coming to my ordination, first and foremost. There's no way that I can express the gratitude that I feel in my heart for all of the work that was put into this ordination from all of the people who have done so many things to support me in this. From the moment that I recognized my call to this very moment, thank you. We gotta do what the spirit says do and when the spirit says do, we know this. But beyond that, we have to build community. We have to connect. You have to reach a place where it becomes more about what we have and less about what you have. You have to determine that there is space in universalism for everyone and Unitarianism for us all to be united. It's not hard. It's actually quite easy. Our seven, which should be eight principles are just the very bare minimum. Just the ABCs. If you didn't know where to start, I think I think that what we've seen today here is a good primer. Start here and work your way out. Look around the rooms that you're in. You're in good company. We can do this if we work together. If we don't work together, we will surely fail. Unitarian Universalism will surely fail. Spirit of life, let us rise. Amen. May it be so. We extinguish our chalice today, having been in the spirit of life and love and presence of everyone gathered, knowing that the support of Ali's ministry moves further out into the world and is a blessing unto Unitarian Universalism and in remembrance of all of the ancestors who guided us to this moment today. Amen, Ashe, and blessed be.